Canada is one of the most famous countries for its night active wildlife. The often attack livestock farms, such as sheep, cows, causing damage to hundreds of millions of animals. So how can farmers best deal with and control these wild species? Watch this whole entire video to know why. According to Agricultural Statistics, AAFC, coyotes were responsible for 60.5% of the 140,000 livestock predated in Canada in 2023. Total number of livestock predated in 2023 accounting for 1.7% of all livestock in Canada. According to the AAFC report, the total number of adult and young cattle in Canada was 8.2 million and 12.6 million. As of July 1, 2024, the often attack livestock at night when cattle are resting and sleeping. The Canadian government has taken its most extreme measure to deal with the coyote population. Night hunting takes place. Hunting coyotes at night has become a fairly simple countermeasure. Government hunters and farmers have used diffused lighting systems to track coyotes. Use remote hunting tools to limit noise while moving. Let's follow the process of harvesting coyotes at night. They choose a convenient location to have an overall view of the free-range cow farm. In this position, the rate of shooting them at critical points is very high. When coyotes appear, observe and monitor them carefully because even the slightest mistake can endanger livestock on the farm. In addition to needing a unique hunting license, skill is very important. They would take down one coyote at a time. On average, each person can hunt about 2 to 10 animals in a night of hunting. Canada's fox population currently numbers about 10 million. Fox populations are unevenly distributed, concentrated in urban and rural areas. Foxes often attack livestock at night when the livestock are sleeping. They often attack small livestock such as chickens, sheep. Fox attacks can cause significant damage to farms. So the best thing to deal with this population? The government has introduced fox hunting methods. At night is the time when they forage a lot. Hunting at this time has many advantages. Just go to the field areas near farms to hunt them.
These areas often smell like livestock, attracting many foxes. Canadian hunters often use radiator lights to observe and search for them. Because the fox body is quite small and they often attack from behind, a teammate is needed to ensure the hunter's safety. When detecting fox attacks, you need to stay quiet to observe. Each time, the hunter can shoot down one animal. This fox species is very agile and requires a lot of practice before participating in the hunting process of this species. Using different types of hunting tools will yield different results. Accuracy and speed each time will depend on the features and capacity of each type. During a night of fox hunting, each hunter can harvest from 5 to 20 foxes, depending on their skills, experience, and the type of equipment they're using. These numbers are the average, and may actually fluctuate depending on weather conditions, terrain, and the presence of foxes in the hunting area. According to estimates, only about 3 to 2 percent of fox populations declined a fraction over the course of a year due to hunting. This raises questions about the sustainability of fox hunting and requires strict management to ensure a balance between hunting and conservation of wildlife populations. In addition, there are many other wild species with populations distributed throughout Canada. They are also dealt with by hunting. However, this also needs to be carefully managed to ensure that it does not cause negative impacts on the environment or biodiversity. Management also needs to comply with regulations and law on environmental and wildlife conservation. Do you know of any wild animals that often attack cattle farms at night? And how do you deal with them? In addition to coyotes, black bears are also a species being dealt with. They often attack chicken farms at night, especially in areas near forests. Their frequent appearance has caused a lot of worry for people. The black bear population in Canada currently numbers about 250,000 animals. Black bear populations are unevenly distributed, concentrated in heavily forested areas in eastern and western Canada. Black bear hunting is a popular activity in Canada to deal with this population. This becomes more difficult and interesting when hunting at night. When the darkness covers the forest, some bears will go looking for food. At this time, it is easy to see them. Bear hunting is quite a dangerous activity, so it is important to have teammates with you. Using hunting tools, such as bows and arrows, larger sized hunting tools can also easily defeat the target.
When detecting a target, you need to stay calm and do not make any noise because they are very sensitive because they could easily attack you if they felt any certain level of danger. You should aim for stunning points on the bear's body, such as the chest to shorten their paralysis time using bows and arrows to shoot bears is the most widely used method because of its operational features. After the bear is pinned by the arrow, just follow the trail and harvest. The elk, the largest mammal in North America and Europe, attracts attention with its impressive size. Their height can reach up to 7.5 feet and weigh up to 1,800 pounds, making them one of the strongest creatures on land. Most are about the size of a small truck. Not only are they taller than a car, but they're also many times heavier. Elks have been present in the United States since about 10,000 years ago, when the last glaciers melted. Initially, the inhabited forests and grasslands in Alaska and Canada, but in recent times, the elk population has suddenly increased and they have migrated to more southern areas of the United States. According to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, the moose population in the United States has doubled over the past 50 years, from about 500,000 in 1970 to more than 1 million in 2022. This increase is largely attributed to improvements in their habitats including the expansion of forests and grasslands. This is a testament to the vitality and excellent adaptation of this animal in today's natural environment. According to information from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, each year, there are about 1,500 traffic accidents caused by moose in the United States. This is a notable problem, especially in rural and suburban areas where the elks are common. Statistics shows that economic losses from these accidents reached an estimated number of $1.3 billion per year. And out of this number, repair costs reached about $1 billion, and medical costs for people injured in accidents were $300 million. The most serious accident was recorded on December 23, 2017, in the state of Oregon. In this accident, a truck collided with a moose, causing the truck to overturn and catch fire. This accident killed four people and seriously injured two people. In addition to loss of life and property, Elks also have a major impact on farmers and growers. They often eat important crops and fruits such as grass, corn, beans, apples, pears, and grapes. According to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, losses to the agricultural industry are estimated at about 500 
million dollars. And that is only per year. Elks not only threaten traffic and economic safety, but also poses risks to visitors in the forested areas where they live. Each year, there are about 200 elks attacks on forest visitors in the United States, especially in areas such as Alaska, Washington, Oregon, and Montana. Things you should pay attention to to be safe when encountering an elk. When driving in areas with many elks, slow down and always pay attention to your surroundings. When walking in the woods, make noise to alert elks to your presence. Limit contact with moose, especially when they are protecting their youngs. If you encounter a moose, stay calm and try to avoid contact. If they become aggressive, stay still and slowly leave the area. Complying with these safety measures can help reduce the risk of accidents and attacks from elks, protecting both drivers, people living in rural areas, and forest visitors. Elk hunting, a popular population management practice, is widely used in many countries around the world, including the United States, Canada, and Europe. This is not only helps controlling the elk population, but also ensures balance and the ecosystem. In each country and state, elk hunting licensing requirements may vary. The most important thing is the minimum age, which is usually 18 years or older. At the same time, players must also complete a hunting safety training course, including how to safely use guns, handle animals after hunting, and how to protect the environment. The licensing process also involves paying a fee, which ranges from a few dozens to a few hundred dollars. However, these costs are often considered a friction of the benefits of controlling elk populations. When starting hunting activities, participants need to pay attention to some important things to ensure safety. Choosing a safe hunting location is important, and it is also important to use hunting equipment properly. Hunting time also plays an important role, because elks are often active in early morning and late afternoon. According to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, approximately 200,000 elks are hunted in the United States each year. This has contributed significantly to the control and reduction of elks populations in the country. Up to now, most populations in the United States have decreased by about 20% over the past 50 years, according to information from the Fish and Wildlife Service. However, to achieve the best results, players need to pay attention 
to conducting hunting activities responsibly and safely, in addition to the basic requirements, wearing appropriate clothing and footwear, carrying necessary gear, and communicating hunting plans are all important to not only protect yourself, but also the surrounding environment. Trapping and hunting can only destroy a certain number of wild boars, and building fences cannot completely prevent wild boars from entering farming areas. Wild boars often move in herds. The hunting process will give them the opportunity to escape and hide in the forest. Only one wild boar can be caught at a time. In 2022, a group of hunters in Brazoria County, Texas hunted 10 feral hogs. However, they later discovered that two more wild boars had escaped and were hiding in the forest. Just like hunting, there are some types of traps that are also destroyed and escaped by wild boars. Building a fence may not be effective sometimes, while wild boars are intelligent animals and can destroy fences to enter farming areas. In 2022, a farmer in Bexar County, Texas built a fence of 6.56 feet high to prevent feral hogs or feral pigs from entering his farm. However, after a while, while boars entered the farm, causing damage to the crops. In some other areas, inadequate fences also make them easy to overcome. According to a study by Texas A&M University, each wild boar can cause up to $2,000 in damage per year. Wild boars can cause a lot of damage to agriculture, including destroying crops, stealing food, and spreading diseases. Each litter can give birth to 5 to 12 cups, and the gestation period is about 114 days. Not only that, but wild boars can also reproduce two to three times per year, creating conditions for rapid population growth. With such high fertility, just one female wild boar can give birth to more than 100 piglets within two years. This explains why do feral hogs population in Texas has increased significantly. According to statistics from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Services, referred to as the FWS, from 2000 to 2022, the number of wild pigs in Texas has increased from 2.5 million to 5 million, and they have spread across 254 counties in a lot of states. Wild boars are not limited to a specific type of terrain, but can exist in a variety of environments, from deep forests to vast grasslands, from mountainous plateaus to vast plains.
whether day or night. They can travel long distances to find food. They're also capable of enduring all weather, from bitterly cold days to intensely hot days. In addition, the wild boar's ability to eat a diverse diet is another important factor that increases its ability to survive. They can eat vegetables, fruits, grains, and even animal carcasses. This flexibility in diet gives wild boars the ability to find food effectively in any land they choose to live in. Wild boars can reach weights of up to 750 pounds. Their outstanding feature is their high self-defense ability. Equipped with sharp teeth and sharp claws, In Texas, wild pigs do not face any natural enemies except humans. Large carnivores such as tigers, lions, and bears disappeared in Texas long ago. Coyotes and wolves once served as natural enemies of wild boars, but they have been hunted to near extinction. The lack of natural enemies has favored a significant increase in wild boar numbers. They are able to reproduce and grow without facing natural threats. The population is increasing dramatically, putting great pressure on the environment and wild boar species. This increases the need for land and food causing wild boars to enter crop areas and face fierce competition with humans. The need for food for wild boars has also escalated, forcing them to search for food in new areas, sometimes entering a land that is being used for other purposes. The development of infrastructure, such as roads and railways, creates new migration routes for wild pigs, expanding their habitat and food sources. Changing economic structure, especially shifting from agriculture to industry, can abandon agricultural land, creating new opportunities and challenges for wild pigs these issues pose major challenges in the conservation and management of wild pigs. The balance between human development needs and environmental protection is a difficult challenge, but also is an opportunity to find sustainable solutions that ensures the survival of wild boars and the future. How can invasive wild boar populations be dealt with most effectively? Let's continue watching the rest of the video to get to know how exactly. First of all, Pheasants are herbivorous birds. They eat many different types of plants. Yes, they are one of the invasive species that damage crops. With such small bodies, you cannot know how much they eat. A study in England found that pheasants can eat up to 5,511 pounds of food per day equivalent to about 15% of the wheat yield of an acre of land.
This can cause significant damage to crops, especially during dry periods or water shortages. As the weather gets drier, the fields begin to dry out. Pheasants do not just stop at eating grass. They will dig in the soil to find insects inside the soil and affect many different types of plants and degrade the land. Not only that, but the number of pheasant populations increased rapidly. When entering the reproductive cycle, a pheasant will lay about 10 to 15 eggs They will lay eggs in enclosed areas, such as bushes. The mother pheasant will then incubate the eggs for about 21 days. Newly hatched chicks will then be taken by their mother to look for food. According to a study by the International Union for Conservation of Nature IUCN, the growth rate of pheasant populations in Europe is on average about 10% per year. This means that a pheasant population of 100 will increase to 110 by the end of the year. Hunting to control pheasant populations is the leading measure introduced in Europe. In Europe, pheasants are popular hunting birds. This is an important economic activity in Europe. To control the population and increase economic revenue in Europe, European farmers have run parallel pheasant farming systems to serve as hunting services and control wild pheasant populations. It is understood that farmers have generated income from selling pheasants for hunting services. Farmers raise livestock using modern methods from incubation to breeding. The entire farm is surrounded by large nets, so that the chickens cannot move outside the farm. In these areas, farmers grow agricultural products to provide food for chickens. When they weigh enough to be hunted, they will be herded into a corner and about 5 to 10 pheasant harvesters will move to the hunting areas. Pheasant hunting season usually begins in August and lasts until December. During this time, millions of pheasants are hunted each year. Each year. European farmers earn about $500 million from raising and supplying pheasants. About $1.2 billion contributes to the European economy every year in terms of hunting millions of pheasants. After being harvested, pheasants will be released into the field where hunters will have to pay to hunt. And European countries also set regulations and the number of pheasants allowed per day for each hunter. This is to ensure stricter control of the pheasant population. The number of pheasants after being hunted will be harvested and processed by the hunters themselves. Pheasant meat is a popular dish. Pheasant bodies are quite small, and you will think, how many pheasants do you need to use to be able to provide meals for the whole family? An adult male pheasant can weigh up to 2.5 pounds, while a female pheasant will have a smaller weight, which is equivalent to 1.5 pounds. So if your family has about four people, you need at least a chicken that is 2.5 to 3 pounds to have enough food for your family members.
you know, the price of pheasant meat is quite high, reaching about $15 to $20 per pound. While regular chicken meat costs from $46 per pound, and chicken here is reaching the price of $5 to $7 per pound. Pheasant meat has a unique flavor and texture, making it a popular dish in many parts of the world. Pheasant meat has a lower fat content, higher protein content, and richer flavor. Pheasant meat is also often considered healthier than regular chicken meat. You can also prepare dishes according to the dishes you like and your family's general taste. In addition to chicken meat, their feathers are used to make hats and jewelry. The best quality pheasant feathers are those from the long-tailed pheasant, the native pheasant species. The feathers of this chicken species have bright colors and high gloss. They are used to decorate hats. The price of normal hats ranges from $50 to $500 piece. The price is quite high and depends on the type of hat. The most expensive pheasant feather hat in Europe is a hat made from long-tailed pheasant feathers, priced at $1,500. This hat is handmade by a French artisan and decorated with intricate motifs with such a high price. How many more dollars do you think European farmers will reap every year from hunting and harvesting this pheasant? So now I guess the real question is, what do European farmers exactly do to deal with these wild species? If you want to know more and more, let's continue watching the rest of the video. So since these solutions have been affecting in preventing the growth of colonies of some invasive species, do you believe in any other better solution? If so, please don't forget to share your comments and opinions down below, plus don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to support our channel with our upcoming videos.
And lastly, don't forget to share this video with all your friends so that they can watch it and enjoy it as well.